And I think uh, the West Virginia rally after all this horrendous news yesterday is indicative of the deflection that the Trump administration is going to continue to have. He was on target on his message. And I think the markets are going to to ignore this for the most part because it is not paid to buy a ticket to the circus. You know, if you've just stuck with where the earnings growth is, where the economy is, um, you know, you, you were paid to take those risks. So focus on the fundamentals. And Karen, I know that's a message that you always um, come on air with. Uh, at the same time, when you take a look at valuations, a lot of people say, you know what, valuations don't matter too, too much. But if, the longer we go in this bull market, don't they matter more and more? And are you concerned at all about some of the valuations, particularly uh, in areas like technology, which has been the market leader? Well, the valuations right now, I would say, are, are probably fair. Um, but the earnings continue to, to tick higher. And that's, the, that's what's keeping valuations in check. And so I don't think that investors are, are being shorted for what the risk they are taking. I think it's a absolutely fair risk. And earnings just continue to, to move higher, despite all the talk about trade, despite all the talk about all these political events. Earnings are moving higher. And that's what investors have to keep their eye on. That's, that's the ball they have to keep their eye on. Earnings are getting better. This is not going to derail the way companies are doing business. So the short-term noise, they have to put in the background because it really is earnings. Uh, well, you know, Rich, to that point, there's no doubt about it. Earnings have come through better than most have expected. The revisions look good. But if you go back to when first quarter, in the first quarter when earnings season kicked off, okay, mid-January, yeah. the S&P is up 2%. From the, from the beginning of the current reporting season, July 12th, when J.P. Morgan reported, the market's up less than 2%. So you have 20, 25% earnings growth, and the market is barely forced to 2%. Now, obviously, the market was hugely up into this, but does it tell you, Rich, that maybe uh, this isn't going to impress the market, even if it continues from here? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a really good point. The, um, we're going to have to limp through some of this. The other huge problem that we've had last year and even this year you know, there's a, world, there's a word mana, which means pervasive superpower. And that's kind of where the returns have been this year, Mike. Forty percent of the returns have come from Microsoft, Apple, Netflix, and Amazon. And until we get money flowing back into some value names and start to lengthen um, the participation in this market, we're going to limp along at best, barring any huge issues um, in the fall. Earnings are coming through next year. We're going to go from $160 to $170. But it's going to depend on what multiple people are going to give it if the Fed stops raising rates at the end of this year. And we can still have that 18, 18 and a half multiple. You can still see high single digit returns for next year. But it's going to be uh, limping along mm -hmm. and grinding from here. The easy money has been made. So limping along into into the rest of the year, Michelle, how does the economy look into the rest of the year? And, and it, you know, it's, it's fraught with challenges when it comes to trade talks that are ongoing, as well as the Fed raising interest rates. But I have to say, it isn't limping along as we move into the second half. The economy has great momentum. Most estimates for growth in the second half of the year have come up toward us, looking at 3% um, in the second half, which is Really, it would be, you know, the best economic performance since 2006. So I'm really encouraged by what I'm seeing on the consumer side. Of course, that's helped because the job market is so strong. And I'm watchful, of course, about the impact of tariffs and trade escalations, what that might do to discourage businesses in any way from continuing to invest in hire. But there is just no sign yet of, of any of that discourse coming through and having an economic impact. And, and I don't think that the Fed continuing to normalize Normalize really poses that much of a challenge. I mean, that was one of the questions I guess I was going to ask Karen was just about the fact about the, at what point does the Fed become a worry. But at this point, I, I, I don't see that as a, as a real problem for the markets.